And my talk's a little slapdash tonight because I did prepare a wonderful talk last night and then my computer crashed, which is why I just had to change, um, change carousels. Um, so back to the main talk about subject selection, building a portfolio, managing a portfolio, challenging yourself as an underwater photographer to move on after those, those competition wins. I think before we start to look at some of those specific questions, it's good to remind ourselves, sort of categorise the types of pictures that we tend to take as underwater photographers. We shoot, and I think it's good to look at this in, in sort of almost in terms of land photography. We shoot landscapes underwater, obviously. We shoot um, landscapes including um, man-made stuff. The colours look a bit wonky, but never mind. Um, we shoot people in the underwater environment up to, up to the stuff that they do. Hmm. And we shoot people interacting and, and meeting the creatures that live there. We shoot portraits of the animals, um, wide angle portraits and close up portraits. And we shoot pictures of the animals in their environment. So these are all sort of categories that you know, apply to outdoor, nature photography, above water. Um, and we perhaps shoot some slightly more creative interpretive shots of the creatures we see, and perhaps some strongly interpretive and creative shots that really start to distort reality um, and to create more artistic feeling. Um, but generally, th these are fairly standard types of shots. We're not doing anything that's too different. Um, oh, and we take pictures that show man's many impacts on the underwater world. Um, in this case here, quite a comical one. But I don't really want to look at what, what we shoot in that scene. I want to, want to sort of ask us the question of why we shoot. And obviously we all have, you know, there's, you know, there's uh, there 56 people in the room tonight. There's probably 70 or 80 reasons why we take pictures underwater. Um, but for me, and I really you know the only way I can really address a lot of the questions tonight is as a case study of what I feel. The reasons that, that I shoot, I guess these days, come down to, to sort of three reasons that, that I could think of quickly. And I tried to think of one to be in the letter E. Um, the first is to, is, to, um, is to excite people about the underwater world. You know, it's to show them things that grab their attention, stop them, and make them look at my pictures of the sea rather than someone else's pictures of a, of a car or a model or, or whatever it is. It's to infuse them, to make them feel perhaps a closer affinity and interest in the ocean and wanting to go down there themselves. <coughs> and it's probably to educate them as well, to maybe tell them stories about the underwater world that they haven't thought of before. It's a pair of, of, of sockeye salmon. And with those goals in mind, I guess you know, I can summarise my photography in, in wanting to have an impact, and it's one of the reasons why I'm particularly drawn to the type of work that can get my photography in front of large audiences, such as, as through newspapers and things. You know, you're not going to get wonderful reproduction in newspapers, but you do have the opportunity to reach very large audiences that way. Um, and then hopefully to get those people interested in underwater things and hopefully make them care a bit more about underwater things. And um, if, 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 if those are, are, are my goals, and, and, and this is how I sort of make my decision about what I'm going to shoot. If I want to get that mass maximum impact, then I need to think about what I'm going to shoot. And a sad reality is, if you want underwater pictures to, to have a strong resonance with the general public, you need to photograph these things. And I know, and I'll talk, I'm going to talk more about this later on, I know there's lots of people in this room who aren't very keen on photographing people underwater, having models in their pictures. I know I never used to like having models in their pictures. But hopefully I'm going to share some experiences later about how I changed my mind towards this um, and how I think it does benefit our shots if we want them to have that wider impact. If we can't get nice, exciting people in our pictures, we can at least get nice, exciting <coughs> creatures in our pictures. So subject matter, like these dolphins, you know, are another subject that is good to incorporate. Well, not dolphins specifically, but sort of large, charismatic marine creatures, everything from... <coughs> From, you know, from turtles to, um, to sharks. All these sort of creatures obviously have a natural affinity. You know, amazing scenery, also like we saw in Iceland, has that same you know, naturally charismatic subject matter. But there's a, there's a, you know, we have to face facts amongst friends here, but there's quite a lot of stuff that lives in the ocean that doesn't perhaps have that much natural charisma, certainly to, to the non-divers and people who aren't interested in the world. Yet, it's still important we tell its stories visually. And so, you know, it's not just a case of only ever taking pictures of people and dolphins. 
We do also want to challenge ourselves as underwater photographers to tell the stories of the less exciting creatures, and that's perhaps where we have to work a little bit harder photographically to create compelling images of those less exciting subjects. So to come back to that question, so where now? And, this is a, and I can only really ask, you know, only relate when I've asked myself that question. You know, where now? I've achieved that goal. What do I do now? Well, I've sort of addressed this a number of times during, during my development as a photographer, and I'm sure I'll address it again in the future as I continue to develop as a photographer. You know, my, one of my first enjoy, my first loves, I guess, in underwater photography was I used to really enjoy working very hard at creating really memorable <coughs> portraits of fish <coughs> and things like that. Not exciting subject matter, goat fish really aren't exciting subjects, um, I'm prepared to admit that. But you know, I remember spending two dives taking this many years ago, you know, trying to get this perfect pose, a quirky smile, eye contact, all that sort of stuff, nice symmetry. You know, very, very happy, you know, to produce this image. But the reality is, you know, amongst a group of underwater photographers, people might go, oh yeah, that takes a bit of skill, well done you. But, you know, to a wider audience, you know, it, it has some appeal, it certainly does, but it, it's not the most appealing subject matter. Um, and if you want your images to have the opportunity to reach out, to really start to change people, you know, to go beyond winning an underwater competition for having lots of patience and actually start to, to impact on people, we have to challenge ourselves to take on subject matter that we're not perhaps interested in. You know, big chunks of metal, people exploring them, um, stuff like this. I was never at all interested in rep photography. I mean, for many, many years, I'd always take a macro lens on a wreck as a, as a sort of a form of protest, I think. <laughs> I had to dive there. But for whatever reason, I'd always shoot macro on wrecks. And I'd never shoot divers. And, and then, you know, I slowly began to challenge myself to take on these subjects. And now both are two of my favourite subjects to shoot. And what I want to go through in this talk is run you through some of these subjects that I feel are important to, to take on and some of the, 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 the things I try and communicate in my images when I'm taking them on. The other challenge I, I set myself, uh, I'm going to get out of this bitch. Um, the other challenge I set myself is, is to diversify my portfolio in terms of where I was diving. And I used to, to, to be very resolutely keen on diving in, in lovely, warm, clear water, because it was always very productive photographically. And I used to, used to dive with, with nice, attractive dive buddies like this. Whereas nowadays, I seem to dive with this one. <laughs> And, and do this sort of this sort of diving, which is, this is from last last week. I mean, I, so I definitely seem to be progressing the wrong way in this way. But there is there has been a payoff, and that is it's allowed me to diversify my portfolio from pictures predominantly of tropical subjects to be able to take, you know, to be able to produce wide angle imagery in cold water environments, to be able to take you know to, to, to capture some of the very interesting creatures that live in these environments. Um, and, important, and to tell stories from other parts of the underwater world. The underwater world now, having made this you know, transition, for me, the watershed for this was obviously after my last book, uh, which was in 2007, and that book had a lot of um, um, critical success. And really, I felt there was no way for me to sort of top that. I could do a better book, but we'd end up winning the same plaudits. So it was time to sort of challenge myself to, to expand my portfolio. Um, and what's been fantastic has been the opportunity to... To, to be able to tell very different types of stories. And as I'm now beginning to, and some of the pictures in this slideshow represent um, <laughs> where my portfolio is in terms of my next book project, and fresh water is probably going to make up 25% of that next book. And so it's been a big, big challenge for me to get out there and shoot in fresh water. It's one of the reasons for accepting the trip to Iceland. And fresh water is a fantastic place to shoot. Lots and lots of different stories to tell there. Wonderful things that you, you know, never see in the sea. This is a... Uh, medieval uh, water mill in Italy, in a lake in Italy. Fantastic place. But fresh water is fantastic. It's not just, you've got such a mixture of colours, um, visibilities. There's a river up in Scotland. Just completely different colour tones to anything taken in the sea. Really interesting place to shoot. Lots of weird creatures. Um, and one of my favourite things about fresh water um, is you've always got, you know, particularly nearly all the time in fresh water, you've got fantastic surface. It's, there's not, there aren't a lot of waves in fresh waters, in rivers, there might be a bit of striation from the flow. A lot of lakes are very well protected by trees, so you always have really nice surface to work with. Lots of, you know, lots more interesting pictures. This is a, um, um, a soft-shell turtle, soft-shell soft terrapin from Florida. Really weird creature, you know, there's so much stuff out there that I've never seen an underwater picture of the, I'm sure there are, 
But you know, and there's, there's a lot, you know, fresh water's really, really interesting. Lots of cool stuff to shoot. I really like this critter. And of course, you know, it, it's not, doesn't just end at uh, fish or reptiles. We've got ma marine mammals as well. This is a uh, baby, um, baby manatee here. And again, you know, you've got that smooth surface all the time. Work your reflection in, have the snail's window coming in, shoot splits. You know, fresh water's fantastic for all these things. Um, because you know you've got this opportunity to always be working in and around the surface. Anyway, that's another intermission, I guess.